There is a question that arose in medieval Buddhism as to whether the practice was sudden or gradual. And as so often was the case with those questions in medieval Buddhism, what we find in the early texts tell us that neither side was right, neither side was wrong. Practice is both sudden and gradual. The Buddha's own analogy for the practice is the continental shelf off of India. There's the gradual progress, followed by a sudden drop-off. What's gradual about the practice is the gradual development of your discernment. The things we're going to need to know are all right here, but for some reason we don't see them. We don't see the connections. We don't see the steps. A lot of things come up in the mind, and they seem to be unarticulated. A surge of energy, a surge of emotion. It doesn't seem to have any words to it. And it's hard to say where it comes from, why it comes. But as you get the mind to settle down, you not only get more and more sensitive to little mo movements in the mind, but also quick movements. Things slow down as well. It's like listening to a bird song. There are many birds who seem to be singing in chords, or just a blast of many notes all at once. But it turns out we hear it that way because what you might call the refresh rate for our ears is slow, slower than theirs. If you were to take a recording of the bird song, slow it down, you'd see that the blast of notes was actually an arpeggio, a series of quick notes. Once you hear them distinctly, you can understand what the bird is doing. Well, it's the same with the mind. A lot of emotions come up, and it's just a burst of energy. Yet when the mind begins to slow down, and you begin to see that steps by which the mind goes through its processes of creating thoughts and then dropping them, it all begins to make sense. Not in the sense that you agree with what the mind has been doing, but you can understand how the mind is operating under ignorance, or how it has been operating under ignorance. Now if you develop your powers of concentration, develop your mindfulness, and focus on the question of how not to fall for these things. The steps begin to slow down, and you can see them clearly. And when you see them clearly, you begin to see how empty many of them are. The mind does have its funny reasons, and one of the reasons it goes through these reasons so fast is because it knows that if you were to see the steps, they wouldn't make sense. So it rushes through. It tries to pull you along, simply with the force of its, of the rush. I mean, you can see the mind has made this decision, then it makes that decision, and you're not so easily swayed. You can drop things that you've been holding on to without realizing what they were. When you drop things, that's when it gets sudden. You see in an instant. And John Mahabhava talks about this. He says, you go through the practice again and again and again. Whatever your meditation topic is, you reflect on it again and again. You don't count the times. You just keep doing it, because you know this is part of the path that's gradual. But then there will come a point where things click, they fall into place, and the bottom drops out. This may be one of the reasons why the phrase for the attainment of stream entry is actually falling into the stream. You're riding along in the bank, and suddenly you're in the stream where you weren't before, and the stream will take you. 
This is why it's called a, a stream. It takes you to a goal, the very first taste of the deathless. And you realize that you're not doing the stream. You've put together the path. I mean, the Thai John is called Maga Samangi, which is the path falling into place. Then you fall into the stream. It's interesting that these images all have to do with falling. The continental shelf goes along gradually, and then you have a drop-off. You fall over the drop-off. The things that used to support you suddenly give way. And instead of taking you to danger, you fall into something that's much of much greater value. Those are the moments we hope for, but you don't get there by simply hoping for them. You do the work, the gradual work, feeling your way. And we'd like to see that it's orderly and nice steps. In fact, there are actually suttas in the canon which talk about how orderly the path is. Well, in retrospect, it's orderly. But as you're feeling your way, you don't see the order yet, but you know the basic principles. You hold to the precepts. You try to get the mind more mindful, more concentrated, get it more peaceful. Try to detect disturbances in the mind that you didn't see before. And learn to be okay with just sitting here for a while. Some people complain, you sit there and nothing happens. It's like learning how to be a hunter. They say that anthropologists, when they try to learn the skills of the various tribes they study, have found that hunting is the hardest of the skills, because it requires a lot of patience and a lot of alertness, unrelenting alertness, steady alertness. all-around alertness, which is precisely the quality we're trying to develop here. And as you maintain that alertness, you will begin to see little movements of the mind that you didn't see before. That's the discernment that comes from concentration. Your intent is to get things still, and in the process of getting them still, the insights are the bonus. If you aim too directly at the insights without getting the causes right, it turns into what they call vipassana sanya, perceptions of insight, which are not the real thing. Remember, perceptions are compared to mirages. You want to force yourself to have an insight, and you've heard about what the insights are. And so the mind tries to create them. It's the unexpected insights. Those are the ones that are more reliable. And again, as the Ajahns say, you don't have to be thinking about inconstancy, stress, or not self. Simply when you see the mind doing something and you realize that it's stupid, that it doesn't make sense, something that was buried in that squawk of a sound, then now you begin to pick out the different arpeggios. When you see that it was stupid, you just drop it. You see that you were putting effort into something that didn't repay the effort. Why do it? That very practical part of the mind is what's going to really help you here. The one that says, is this worth the effort that goes into it? And if it's not, why bother? It's simply that you learn how to apply that to areas of the mind that you ordinarily don't apply it to. Recently I did an article on the topic of psychic powers that can come from meditation, and I got some pretty snide rebuttals. People were trapped in their Western point of view, in the materialist point of view, in which psychic powers are delusions. And they asked, how can you possibly believe in this stuff? Didn't the Buddha teach you to question things? And if they'd actually been 
interested in having a conversation, I would have asked them, well, how about questioning your materialistic presuppositions? We coast through life assuming a lot of things that are actually detrimental to us. And so when we learn how to step back from them, getting the mind quiet, and seeing our thoughts as strange, and seeing them as instances of stress arising and passing away, and asking ourselves, is the stress worth it? In some cases, it is. The thoughts that help you understand things, the thoughts that help you clear up doubts about your own practice, those are useful. Those are worth the stress. But there are a lot of things that just keep us bound, keep us fettered. They're not worth the stress at all. So when that practical part of the mind sees that, it's going to drop them automatically. It's like seeing something that you've been standing on suddenly falling open beneath you, like a trap door. That's the sudden part of the path. But you can't plan the sudden parts. You simply follow the instructions that show you how to do things gradually. And if you trust in the process, trust in these gradual instructions, they'll take you to those sudden parts. You can't clone your sudden awakening. But you can plan your next step and your next step. When those steps will reach the goal, you can't tell ahead of time. But trust that they will.